Hey, beautiful. Speaking of beautiful, it's a beautiful day. You're a little down right now because Mrs. Primetime is out. This is, this is what you get like. But we're going to go sign up for an estate sale. Get on that list. We're going to get there way early, like an hour early this time. This way we get right in that door tomorrow morning. All right? All right, let's go. Let's go out to the flea market. Time to go to state sale. So I figured I'd start off at the flea market. It was only five minutes away from the estate sale, but as you could see, it was quite empty inside. Now I was able to get two things. The first was this cool, a Tweety Bird cup. I got it for $2. Should be able to sell it for around 20. As you could see, it's embossed on one side. It says bed old putty tat. Now this was really cool. I got this at the very end. This is from ATF Toys. As you can see up top, a great vintage toy brand. This type of chalkboard, you just almost never come across in this kind of state. There's one on Etsy right now for $80, and it's totally beat up, so I should be able to get more than $100. He took his price down to $15 without me even asking, so I just grabbed it up. It has the chalk ledge, and the printing is really in great shape. All right, well, I was hoping for better, but that chalkboard really saved the day. That was really cool. So I'm excited to get that one cleaned up and listed. And now we're headed back to the estate sale. That's where we're really going to find some good treasures. This was the first room I walked into. There were three boxes with die cast metal planes sitting on the front of the bed. I just grabbed them real quick, put them in my box, headed straight into another room, grabbed this ceramic Halloween witch, put it in my box with the three die cast metal plane boxes you see there, and I headed straight into the basement because I was looking for the room with the fireplace. I knew based on advanced pictures of the sale that there were some great die cast sets like the one I just grabbed and the one here in the corner, which is worth hundreds of of dollars. The problem is the price tag on the bigger sets were too high right then and there, so I needed to wait for the prices to go down. So I started to focus on some of these smaller pieces like this tank, which says HM on the bottom. That stands for Hobby Master. That is a great brand to look for that makes die cast sets. They made some of the sets that you'll see here in the boxes. This particular uh, set and some of the others that say World War II on them, like this one, was made by a company called Corgi. Uh, the problem is, again, the prices were too high, so I had to wait for them to settle down. So I looked at other things like this Thunder God uh, wooden piece, which is really cool for just a dollar. And then I started going to look at some of the smaller sets and take a closer look. And you could see there that there's some pieces missing. Look at that. And then you could see over here, there's another spot where there's something missing. This is a problem because collectors want these things complete. Now, this one, it could be even tricky to see because there's some clear pieces that go in there. Uh, the one on the bottom is the base that the plane would sit on, but it has to connect with a swivel bar, and you could see there it's missing. So all three of those I initially grabbed, I just gave them to somebody else, didn't want them. Now, this piece right here is a great one. This one looks to be complete, and this one hardly ever comes to market. The last time it came to market was in Russia. And I'll show you, I got it for $12. And you can see here that it sold for $139 plus $30 shipping. So that was a great buy right there. There were some die cast cars. Uh, the problem is for something like this, this Fast and Furious item, it's just, you know, for $20, $20, it's worth about $25. So there's just not enough money to be made there, especially factoring in shipping something like this. Uh, this one here, uh, this 1952 Lincoln, they wanted $25 on it. You know, it's worth a little bit more than that, but again, not enough meat on the bone for any of the cars that were there. So I didn't wind up getting any of them. So I started looking around and, uh, you know, seeing what else was there. There was this furniture piece. It had some gouges in it. So uh, I just, you know, left that there, uh, started to walk down this corridor here. 
and was just looking for some other things. You know, I, I was on the lookout for some tape measures because I always lose them along with pens. And I was able to find a cool tape measure there. So I just grabbed that, put it in my box. And then I went over to this section here by the bar. There are all these uh, housewares. A lot of estate sales will do this. They'll put housewares into these boxes. And you never know what you'll find there. So, like, I grabbed some baggies because I put a lot of my inventory in, in baggies. And this is a much cheaper way to get them than paying for them uh, at the store. Of course, you can get them for cheap, too, at dollar stores. But here, you get them for even less. Now, these you got to look for. These Gillette Fusions, they go for good money if they're not in production anymore. So I wound up uh, finding two of them and I could get like 20 to $30 for, for both of them and not bad considering I'm going to be paying next to nothing for them. Uh, and then here, you know, there were some additional um, baggies and stuff I grabbed. These um, self-stick letters and numbers, you won't believe what people charge for these things uh, on eBay, you know, like $33 for like five sheets. So I just grabbed the three, I'll put them all together you know, and hopefully I'll get like, you know, 20 to $30 for him. So I just threw him in there. I was going to get the beware of dog sign for Daisy. I thought that would be pretty funny, but I just, I left it behind and I got one more tape measure. Yay. All right. So I headed back upstairs into this initial room to see if there was any die cast left. And there was this small piece here, but you could see there was all this paint lost to it. That's why people left it behind. So that made sense. And by the way, I know people are going to point this out because I always get the pencil sharpeners, but when it has this cheap plastic on the bottom, that's not worth picking up. That's worth about 10 bucks for that. So you want the Boston ones that are all solid. Uh, anyway, so I wound up grabbing this one to take a closer look to say, why do people leave this one behind? You know, I had a $50 price tag on it. You know, let's take a closer look because look, when you open this up, this is what you want to see. It says limited edition. People pay up big time for limited editions. So I'm like, why do they leave behind? There's a little indentation there. I'm like, that can't be the reason. So then I look and I say, hmm, maybe people thought it was broke because you could see there's that piece that's on the bottom there. But that is not broke, okay? That piece that's there, all you have to do is take that and just snap it into that slot right there on the bottom. So you just push it in and there you go. It's all fixed. So then I start looking around. I'm like, well, look, there's some empty slots there. Maybe people thought stuff was missing but if you just open it up and look around there you go you could see there's those ad the additional wheel there it just goes right over there into that spot so it looks like it is complete doesn't look like there's anything missing broken anything like that then she told me she was willing to go down about half price on all of the big plane sets. This is what I was waiting for. She said $27. Well, look at what someone is asking for this $329 plus $44.50 shipping. So I wound up grabbing that because that's the only one available and there's none recently that's sold. And like I said, uh, sets by that company do sell for hundreds of dollars. Then she dropped all this um, ephemera by me, all these um, cool old photographs. And she's like, oh, by the way, I have these if you're interested. So I'm like, yeah, I'm interested. I mean, look at these. These are really cool. They bring you back to a much simpler way of life, which is why people like to look back at these old photos. And uh, there were lots of different types of photos. You know, there were like family-themed ones, uh, relationship-themed ones. And then there were a bunch of ones that had some cool old cars in there too. So, um, you know, I, I just grabbed the whole album. And um, when you see what I paid for everything at the end, uh, you know, this was just something that was literally just tossed in. And I, I barely paid anything for this. So uh, another thing that I really liked was that there were these uh, really cool dairy photos that you're going to see in just a moment. I actually think that these two are the best photos. There's a lot of people that pay up for agricultural type items. And the one to that top right with the girl milking the cow, I think that's the best photo in the whole thing. So grab the album. Now, Went downstairs into the basement again to get this HM piece. This was the one I really had my sights on. Now, it turns out that they just had opened this from the original box. It had been kept in storage for years and they just opened it the day of the sale. You could see there's the original invoice when the person paid for it. The person paid almost 200 bucks for it and that was in 2018. Remember the asking price was $90. There you could see it sold for $178 plus shipping. 
So uh, everything in here is complete. There's, there's nothing missing. So I wound up getting this for $48, which uh, I thought was a good deal considering you know everything else that I'm going to wind up getting here today. And wait until you see. I thought this was the, you know, these die cast sets were going to be the best thing that I got today, but uh, there's something even better coming up. So hold on. Now I'm pointing these things out here to show you that's not something missing. That's where those um, pieces of styrofoam go into to protect the plane and cushion it. So missing slots don't always mean that there's missing items in there. So I uh, wound up taking the original box with me because I could use this for shipping. So always think ahead. This is a great way I could protect my item and I don't have to go hunt down a big box. Now this is part of our ceramic challenge I do every week. I show you three ceramic items items as I'm trying to expand into a new niche. And you tell me which one you would have gotten. There's this cool sheep piggy bank. You put the coin right there into the behind, which is probably not the most appropriate thing for a kid, but uh, $2 on it. That's our first option. So then we head up the stairs to see if there's anything else that we could find there. Okay, so I walked in here and straight ahead, there were these cool old photos looking at me. And so I grabbed this one and I didn't realize there was another one stuck to the back to it at the time. So uh, let me show you what it actually looks like on the back of it. It actually looks like this and it actually says 1891. So that's a really cool picture. And uh, this is me later on uh, showing you what the front of that uh, card looked like that was stuck to it. Then there was another one there. So there were like family pictures. That boy seems like a constant in it. So I grabbed those three. I left this one behind because it was really damaged and stuff. And then, oh, this is an uh, item number two for our ceramic challenge. I don't know what this is supposed to be. A gourd, a witch's hat. I, I don't know. You can see there on the bottom, it says Ott 1971, which looks like one of the names written on the back of uh, the card there. Uh, so I think it was, I don't think it was like a famous artist or anything. So uh, I left that one behind. And then there was this one here. Uh, cool little small piece. I, I like it. Look, you know, not something I normally would pick up. That's part of the challenge. Let me know if you would have grabbed this one. Uh, prices, by the way, on, on these things would have just been a couple bucks a piece. It said made in China, so I left it behind. I went with the sheet. Now, here we go. Now, I started to feel a little, little vibe here that was bringing me towards these books. I was feeling a little magical. So I decided to take a look inside and uh, look what we have here. Look what we have here, this cool hillbilly cookbook. Folks, I love regional cookbooks, old vintage regional cookbooks from like the 60s and 50s. Those sell well. Now, individually, that one there would sell for about seven bucks, which say, ah, that's not that great, right? But think combinations. So you could combine those with some of the other books. A lot of these are Southern cookbooks. So you can make a little lot cooking in Dixie. You know, there's, there's like they said, Southern cookbook. There's a Vermont one. I've never not been able to sell a regional vintage cookbook. So, you know, you might sit on it for a few weeks, but you know, eventually, and this one goes back to the 1940s, they, they'll all sell. So uh, Hyde County cookbook. Some of these things are just unusual. You just don't come across them often. Uh, that one is uh, from North Carolina. And I think there was one other cool one underneath there, Mississippi Mixins. So uh, I'm tempted to make some of the stuff in there. Now, there were some more generic ones in there, and I left these behind. They were just made by a local gasoline company in Rochester. This is not the type of thing you're looking for. So I was just trying to show you what you're looking for, what you're not. Picked up a box of envelopes. Uh, I did pick up two pieces of jewelry. I forgot to film while I was there. They're, uh, at least one of them's pewter. Anything animal, we always pick up. So I love my Dachshund. So I got that one. That's from the 80s. And then got this one with the uh, eagle on it. There's nothing uh, on the back of that one. But uh, got those two pieces as well. Now, this actually, I couldn't believe this. So this is sitting there right at the end. They had a price tag of $50 on it, but she told me she would do even half of that. So $25 for this. This person paid $325 for this Crosley. Always look for Crosleys. It's in the box. It was never used. I got it for $25. I can't believe, even at $50, this would have been awesome. This just blows my mind. I can't believe it. Here's an example. 
full. There's all sorts of different models out there, but just uh, just amazing to see that sitting there. And if you're curious what's inside the garage, there wasn't really much. It was just cool to walk in there. I thought it looked cool from the outside. There was a cool welcome mat you'll see there to the left, but it was kind of heavy. It was worth about $20, but I, I just left it behind because it was big. And like I said, it was, it was pretty heavy. And then there was one more room over to the right, but uh, there wasn't anything in there. I'll give you a little uh, little sneak peek for those of you sneak peek fans. There you go. Got, got a little sneak peek in there, but there really wasn't much. So it's time to go. All right. As you can see, a grand total of $134 for everything I got today, which is really a steal if you factor in everything that was there. I'm going to make my money back plus be in profit just from selling the CD player or just from selling some of those metal die cast planes that you saw me get today. So don't be scared of picking up some of those bigger items. Yeah, they're going to cost more per unit, but would you rather spend a dollar to make 10 to $15 or spend $25 to make $300? So challenge yourself this year when you go out sourcing, do some investigating into the comps and see if it's something that makes sense for you. As you can see, I'm trying to practice what I preach and really trying to continuously source outside the box. We've got the ceramic challenge, so make sure that you let me know which one you would have picked up and uh, looking forward to getting that sheep piggy bank uh, listed pretty soon. So I'm getting hungry. I got to get something to eat. Uh, I'm going to go back to Primetime Treasure Headquarters, start getting some of the stuff processed and listed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you at the next one, everyone. Take care. Hey, Daisy, I'm home. Were you using the hula hoop? Were you using the hula hoop when I wasn't looking? Is that how you keep so fit? Bye-bye, girl. Say bye to everybody.